Hey, what's going on guys? Brian here, Brian's Law Maintenance. All right, we got week two in our shop tour series. I know you guys are really excited about seeing this guest. We've got Jeremy Connect with JJ Grounds over there in Congerville, Illinois. Uh, guys, I really appreciate Jeremy opening up his shop and his business. Uh, I actually got to spend the night at his house with his wife, Kelsey. Those guys are amazing folks, really, really beautiful family and an amazing business. So Jeremy opened up his shop. Uh, he'll go over the dimensions, the setup, but the guy's got a bunch of his Zuzus, a bunch of X marks, and just a great team of folks over there running about a seven figure business. That being said, we want to say a big thank you to the tour sponsors, Cujo Yardware, Steel, Equipment Defender, and Yardbook. Actually, we'll talk a little bit more about Cujo Yardware here. A little teaser here. We're actually wearing the brand new Jags. These are their slip-on shoes. Wasn't a really big slip-on fan, but you know what? After having these on for about the last two, three days, I'm actually kind of warming up to the idea of having a slip-on. But you guys know the Cujo Yardware shoes and their X1 boots, so maybe check those guys out. More on them later. Without further ado, let's check out the shop tour with Jeremy Connect of JJ Grounds over in Congerville, Illinois. Hey, what's going on guys? Brian here, Brian's Law Maintenance. Hope you guys are doing well. Today, we have another shop tour in our exciting series and we're hanging out with none other than Jeremy Connect with Jay Jacobs. How are we doing, brother? Hey, Brian, not too bad. It's good seeing you. Yeah. Uh, so really quick, we're over here in, where are we at, Illinois? Yeah, Congerville. Congerville. Yep, it's right between Bloomington and Peoria, so. Booming metropolis. Oh, <laughs> yep. As Brian found out last night, he was trying to find a place to eat and he drove for like 30 miles and couldn't even find like A anything. McDonald's. Yeah. There was no, <laughs> you know, it's uh, you're a small town when you have no McDonald's, but um, we're not here for that. But any which way, beautiful shop going on here. A lot of you guys uh, already know and follow Jeremy on uh, Instagram. They've got a great account. You guys should give him a follow. But we have a beautiful shop here, and we're going to go on a little tour and check out your guys' operation. Yeah. So yeah. you want to take it away? Yeah. You All bet. right. So this is where we come every morning. We usually do meet here at the shop in the mornings, um, meet in the office, kind of get the um, the schedule down and show the crew what we're doing. Sure. Um, so this building is, is, I think it's around 70 feet long by 42 feet wide, something like that. Okay. Um, we rent it, we're just, we pay right around a thousand bucks a month and that includes, uh, we have a, dump, a dumpster on the side over here so that's, that's handy to use because we're always bringing trash back. Um, and I also have a 15 by 15 office which we'll show you in a little bit. But we'll kind of go around and show you um, the guts of this building. We basically moved in here about seven years ago. There used to be like a, a, a double layer mezzanine here, all built out of wood and, and plywood, and it was all kind of falling apart. So we, we took the whole thing out um, and put in these pallet shelving, which we got out of Indiana. Um, I think we paid around three grand for this whole setup right here. But wow. I'll tell you what, we, we love it. And as you can see, the storage solutions are just like endless. Uh, we use it, you know, the lower ones for stuff like smaller steel equipment. And then, but we'll go over that in a little bit. But anyway, we put this in, um, I would say four years ago, we just love it. Um, but I'll, I'll kind of show you, loading in the morning, uh, the crew, we, we actually park all of our trucks in here at night, all of our Suzu trucks, and we've got four of them. It's really tight, but we park them in, inside every night so that they're out of the weather and the crew comes in, they get their list, and they, they start loading. So most of the small stuff is over here. I mean, everybody pretty much has one of these hand tool racks. Yep. Uh, there's nothing, nothing real fancy about that, but put a big old ledger board up there. And these are actually uh, racks that we got from Menards. They're, I think they're 14 or 18 inches, but they're, they're made to hold like um, shelving but it works really good for, for rakes and stuff. You can put a lot of weight on there and they're not gonna go anywhere. Uh, so we use that for all of our small hand tools. I made this little area in the corner here for kind of our odd stuff that doesn't store real well. Uh, loppers, head shears, hand saws, printers. It's just kind of a catch-all for all that stuff that's not gonna hang very well yeah. up above. But so clean uh, and organized. Yeah, yeah. And, and if you have some odd thing, you just stick it over here and that's that's where it's gonna be kind of out of the way. Cool. Um, and this is kind of our, uh, some of our steel equipment that's more hodgepodge, like the hedge trimmer, the, the pole saw. Um, otherwise, all the, lo all the uh, weeders stay loaded every night on the trucks. So we really don't take those off. Okay, um, a lot of steel product. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we run all steel. Uh, it's not that I don't think that Echo's good or any of the other brands, but we just started with steel and we're just gonna stick with that. Cool. Um, pretty happy with that. So 
You can kind of see our storage. I mean, we we use uh, we do have a skid loader here, which is super nice because we can fork stuff and store it. I, that's about as high as my forklift can reach, though, on the skid steer. So up above, higher than that, a lot of times we're taking the skid steer, raising it up, and then hand yep. loading it. Yep. But that top shelf right there, that is my debris loader. And if you guys have checked out our Instagram page, um, I have a whole uh, highlight reel of how we built our debris loader uh, box on our dump trailer. And basically, you can get it all up there when it's all put away. So it's, it's, it's pretty handy. Um, the actual vacuum, the, the, the Billy Goat vacuum is over on the far side. We put oh. that up on a, on a pallet up there. Gotcha. Um, but worked out pretty good. I was wondering how we were going to store that, but it, it stores really nice up there. I like it. The um, pallet rack is huge because you can really optimize your oh, height. Yeah, you could raise stuff, make them smaller, and if you wanted shelves, like this is like a shelf all the way to the ground, but now we want to put stuff up underneath here. So this is where you go to kind of all the small uh, push equipment that's got a motor on it. Um, you don't see a lot of, I want to show this, if you are doing a lot of maintenance and maybe you got some commercial accounts with a lot of edging, this machine here is a huge time saver. It also saves just the fatigue of the operator. I mean, it's, it's easy as starting it up, you drop your blade down and you just walk behind it. And we do, I would say every week, we probably do around two miles of sidewalk. <clears throat> and we use this unit it's the it's a brown brown products is the manufacturer i think we pay around 1300 bucks for this but it's got a honda engine on it thing lasts forever it's built like a tank there you go um that is pretty beefy so i've never seen one that right big here, if you want to zoom in on that that's the uh but i would highly recommend this product edge master from brown and we have several of the uh 30 inch x mark push mowers I mean, they're great for production, but they weigh a thousand pounds. <laughs> right. Uh, do you have one, Brian? Uh, I've never, uh, I, I don't own one. Uh, I've used one, but I've, I don't own one in my fleet. Yeah. I, I try to get out of push mowing as much so, as I mean, possible. It, it's, it's great for production, but they, they are super heavy. We don't push mow that many yards anymore, but right. it seems like everybody's got a fence or a gate that we can't quite get through. Sure. Um, so we are using that. Is that uh, the Kawasaki or the Kohler? That is the Kawasaki. Okay, I know the new uh, ones, the newer ones with the Kohlers even are like just beast. People love them. Yeah, I don't think actually that's a good point. I haven't even looked. I might have a couple Kohlers. The tags are all off of these, but anyway. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean we 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 switched to the Tractus. We switched to the Tractus tires, and so we've got a lot of brand new tires that are sitting up here that came off Xmark uh, equipment. Um, when I go to trade that mower in, I'll just put the brand new ones back on. Sure. The track just seemed to last um, a good long time. Yep. Um, I like sticking with the same type of wheelbarrow. Uh, we, we use the Jackson wheelbarrows. And we do have a Wolverine here, which I would not recommend. You do not get the Wolverine wheelbarrow. Okay. They, they have this big fat tire that's supposed to be handy. And it's got a little different design on the actual tub. Don't do it. Get Jackson wheelbarrows. That's my opinion anyway. They last a really long time. They're about 200, 220 bucks for a new one, but you'll be glad you did. All right. Um, so these are two of the trucks. This is how they would park in here yeah. uh, overnight. Yep, so overnight we usually park like two Isuzu's right here. We'll pull one in right here, and then one more will go right here. So it's tight, but that's how we park them every night. Um, in the winter time, if we have a big snow, I can actually get an additional three trucks in here, three pickups wow. besides that. Um, it's tight, but it works. It's tight, but I can get them all in. So. And you get the crew loading up right now, so uh, the girls are taking out the two different rigs. Right, yep. So both of these trucks are set up for fertilizer right now. Um, we got the x -Marks spreader sprayer, and that's the Z spray, which is x -Marks new spreader sprayer because they merged. Um, but a crew like this, each crew should generate, right, between $2,000 and $2,500 worth in one day um, on the fertilizing. Now, you know, you probably, material-wise, you're putting down a good 900 bucks worth of fertilizer. That's my cost. But you can be really productive with these stand-on units. Wow. Um, so in th these two crews will crank out close to probably 
five to six thousand today. Wow. Um, and you're you're a big Xmark guy too. Yeah. Yep. We're Xmark all the way around, and yeah, I, I'm super happy with that. Over here <clears throat> is kind of like our workbench area uh, where you do all the repairs, sharpen blades. Um, we, we, we didn't put any, I, I would recommend putting in more lighting in this area. It's, it's bright, you can kind of see, but it's, if you're gonna have a workbench area, add more lights. That's one thing that I would, I probably should do, because when you're starting to work over these areas, you know, you, your body starts casting a shadow down on the workspace, yep. so have some lights up above, shining down, would be better than just what we have here. But. This space works out very good. We've got the old RBG 712. Yeah, um, that's my go-to. So it looks like the crew's gonna be heading out. I'll catch up with you once they get back out of here. All right, guys, quick little transition here. Wanna say a big thank you to the shop tour sponsors that are allowing us to zip across the country, put some miles on the car, airplane tickets and everything in between. None of this stuff is cheap or free. Today's sponsor is Cujo Yardware. Like I said earlier, we're actually wearing the new Jags. A lot of you guys have been checking these out. These are their slip-on shoe. These are brand new for 2022. They come in three or four different colors, so check them out there if you guys like a nice waterproof shoe. Also, their widely popular Cujo Yardware shoe. And a lot of you guys know my story. I was always like, why isn't there an athletic shoe or something that's comfortable to wear all day that has a, a waterproof cap on the toe? Lo and behold, I got an email a week later and Cujo Yardware came out with a brand new product, their Cujo shoe. Also, they have their X1 boots, so if you guys want boots for hardscaping, landscaping, or maybe you're just a bigger fan of boots instead of shoes, they got you covered there. So check them out at CujoYardware.com. Brian's 10 does save 10% on their website and you still qualify for free shipping. How cool is that? Again, I wanna say a big thank you to the shop tour sponsors, Cujo Yardware, Yardbook, Steel, and Equipment Defender. We'll leave all those links in the description down below. Without further ado, let's get back to Jeremy Connect shop tour over there in Congerville, Illinois. These girls, they just know how to move that machine. I said the girls are doing awesome, man. Uh, you're gonna give Mark and Rob a run for their money, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Backing up trucks and trailers. Yeah, awesome. so we do hire, we got a, a number of young ladies that work for us. Um, and it is always like one of those things, you get a new hire, like boy, how are they gonna handle the equipment? How are they gonna handle the trucks? But kind of give them a little bit of training be patient with them, work with them out in the parking lot with some cones, and then set them loose. Pulling in here, yeah. this is really good training. These are 14 foot overhead doors, way too narrow. If I'm gonna build a shop, I'm going 18 feet. Is that right? For sure. Okay. Yeah. I would do I would do 18 foot doors if I was building a shop. And how, how wide again were these? 14. 14 foot, okay. I think almonds are doing 14s. I'm like, oh dude. <laughs> it might even be 12s. It's like crazy. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, now is the shop uh, heated or insulated? How does that all work? Yeah, so unfortunately this shop here is not heated and I wouldn't even really consider it insulated. Right. Um, it's got some like, some sort of paneling up there, but it doesn't do anything. So like it's probably 43 degrees outside right now and it's it's cold out here. Yeah, right? yeah. Here. So that's the, uh, we just use a salamander heater. If there's like an area, you know, if I'm working at the workbench area, I can throw that thing on. Yep. It keeps me warm in that little space over there. But we don't spend a lot of time in here in the winter. Um, we actually do all of our maintenance in the fall. So as far as all the mowers, we do all the oil changes, we clean them up, sharpen all the blades in the fall. Because why have that mower sit all winter with old oil in it? Um, right get fresh oil in it and then let it set. So all the maintenance has been done and it's basically ready to go here in the spring. Awesome. Um, so then you get, uh, so this is like the work quarter for sharpening blades, uh, just kind of clean up the equipment over there, obviously. Yeah, yep, and, and those cabinets, uh, we can go look at that. Yeah. It's, it's nothing special, um, but it, it works out as far as like the, I, I like having doors that you can shut. If you just have open shelving, it looks a lot more clever. Like for instance, that stuff on top, it just looks a little junky. It'd be nice if that stuff was stored inside. So that's, that's why we do these cabinets. Um, and so a lot of this stuff is like cleaning, cleaning stuff for the mowers. And then I have bins of, you know, pull strings. This is like Honda engine parts. Um, Wiring harnesses, different yeah, things. Yeah, just yep. different things like that. And then this one over here is more, uh, more kind of a hodgepodge. But, some more tools. Sure. Uh, but you can you can just put all this randomness in a cabinet, shut the doors, and it looks pretty clean. Yeah, those are just like uh, craftsman. Uh, yeah. 
I like it. Yep. That's sharp. And so it's worked out really well. We also have a, uh, a little stereo system in here. Oh. So if you want to play music or something, and this thing actually kicks out the volume yeah. really well. There you go. So, um, one thing that is unique that we've done that I haven't seen a lot of guys do is we, we put some lockers in for the employees. Yeah, I was noticing that earlier. That's pretty cool. Um, we did this, I don't know, it's probably been four years ago now, but the employees really like it because they, they don't have stuff sitting in their, in their car or whatever. Um, they can put their rain gear in here, boots, earplugs, gloves, whatever. Mine's probably, the, mine's probably the messiest, but I just, you know, have a bunch of gloves in here, whatnot. So oh, hearing protection, I, you know. Yep. It's, so for a thousand bucks, you know, you can you can get a bank of lockers like this. I can't. I think they came in sets of three or four. I kind of forget. I got three. I got three sets. Um, four, four, and four. Count them. Yeah. yeah. So it must have been three sets of four. Where, where'd you get those, if you don't mind me asking? I think I got them from Global Industries okay. or Uline Supply, one oh, or the yeah. other. Probably Uline, yeah. They yeah. got everything. Um, now, I did, I did have to install these. Like, they came in a bazillion parts. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so it took two of us, like, a day and a half to assemble these and put sure. them together. But once they're together, they're together. We, you can move them. They're not even screwed into the wall. And no, they're not. So <laughs> you could just, uh, to, and they are, the, the four units are screwed together on the sides. So sure. you could undo that, but then you can move them wherever you wanted. Um, what, what about the name? Is it um, just electrical yeah, tape? Just, uh, actually, one of my employees has a little, I think it's called a cricket machine. Yeah. And she just prints them out and slaps them on. So well, that way people come, people go. Yeah. And we need to, uh, we need to make some of these go because some of these guys aren't here anymore. But there you go. That's, it's kind of like a wall of fame or, uh, or shame. <laughs> <laughs> no, yep. yep. You guys have some great people working for you. So that's, yeah. all, that's awesome. While we're, can you get to the mowers? I want to show you something. And a lot of guys have the, uh, the discharge chutes on their mower. We use, um, it's called a power chute and I'll show you this one here because it's it's fully stocked. This is how they come. Um, but basically, it, you run power off the battery and you can get a foot pedal or a toggle switch. Foot pedal works out the best. Um, but up and down and then you can like see it, it's stuck halfway or you can feather it however you want. There's, there's tons of different settings. Oh, look at that. And I like it because it goes vertical. Um, some of them don't go up all the way. They stick out still. Yep. And you're just opening yourself up to, to nail them something um, if it's sticking out horizontally. Now, what we typically do is take that metal off and put something on there that's got like some give to it. So like if you do smoke something, it's gonna break this, but not screw up all your uh, linkage. Sure. Because these metal ones, if you hit a concrete pole, it's gonna go all the way back into here and bend up the motor or those arms or whatever. So we pretty much take that metal off right away and stick this on. What, just, uh, is this just like a plastic or a- Yeah, I bought a whole sheet of this stuff, like a four by eight sheet and Menards. Okay. Um, it was like 50 bucks. I don't even know what it is or what it's for, but it works out pretty good. Um, that makes sense though. Like you said, you hit a curb or uh, jump a yeah. sidewalk or something. It's kind of like, you know, on a, on a uh, snow plow, you got the cutting edge and they got the springs and stuff. It, it takes the, uh, the, the blow so it's not gonna twist the frame or whatever. I like it. And you, so you run them on most of your mowers? Yep, every mower has them, um, even on a walk behind. And yeah, yep. Do they, uh, how do they last? Do they, do they uh, burn out or break or? Yeah, so, so they're kind of expensive. Like we probably pay 350 bucks for a new unit. And then I bet we go through two pumps a year per per unit. Each pump's about 60 bucks. Oh, wow. Um, but you know what, you take them off and you, and you hardly even know how to mow anymore. Like yeah. you get so used to being able to stripe yep. and then like, oh yeah, I, I can't throw grass on the air conditioner or I can't throw grass onto the street. So you about forget how to mow if you take them off. So yep, yep. Um, it's just, a must. We, we throw discharge yep. blockers on all of ours. Yeah. Uh, whether they're mechanical or power shoot like you have. Yep. They're, they're a must on any mower. Yep. I love it. So, and then you got all the X marks and... Uh... Yeah, so we run, uh, they're not all together here, but we got two 72 mowers, two 72 inches. We got, uh, we actually have three 52 inches. One of them's uh, getting serviced, but those are two 
um, 52 inch and then we have a 60 inch here and a 60 inch over there um, this one that's, that's right behind me was brand new back in um, fall of 2021 and we got the ultravac still set up on that for spring cleanups yeah so that's sharp man it's a, it's a decent setup i yeah. like it yep and then here's the uh the final part of the uh, tour what do we got the bathrooms or office yeah so we have a couple uh storage rooms here that um, are kind of isolated because there's uh, chemicals and fertilizer and our all of our oils we kind of keep in here i don't know that it's really a, a safety reason that we do it but it does kind of make sense to have it in a spot where it's not going to leak out all over anything else so this is where we keep all of our mixed fuel kind of all of our um uh, liquid oils and stuff like that and this room here is more chemicals uh, backpack sprayers and this way I can kind of like keep people from uh, employees like wandering in there and like messing with stuff messing with stuff because it, you know if it was sitting out there they might be more inclined to grab it and mistake it for something else yep whereas this you have to be intentional to go in there yep. and do something it just kind of helps avoid that and, and you know spills puncturing knocking stuff over right you know all that yep. mess just keep it away from everybody yeah super, yep. and, super smart and keep it away like from other equipment that would drip on backpack blowers or whatever like it's all in here if, if one of those uh containers would start leaking or something this it's all it's all in here i so, like it makes yeah. sense we do do a fair of uh lawn treatments it's something that i think in this area here you could push it and, and really grow but we've got i think there's uh four licensed applicators here in our company and um, you can really charge a premium for this type of work because there is a, I think the, the community and, and people are aware of the risks involved with it. And so you don't even have to really like sell yourself. You, yep. can, you can name your price. We can say that we're licensed. Um, we're gonna do a good job and they're willing to pay about whatever. Cool, I yep. like it. So, and then this is my office here. Um, like I said earlier, we, we come in here basically every morning um, and sometimes in the summertime we meet out in the shop area, but when it's chillier, we come in here in the office. I usually give the crew a uh, list of what they're going to do and they punch in and start going after it. So you get the, uh, the space heater. Yes, there that is go. our lifesaver. <laughs> otherwise we'd be freezing. So we got a, one here and there's another one back there. but. Like I said, this building is not insulated, so if I did not run the space heater, it would get really cold in here. Sure. But, uh, spend a lot of hours in here. I really don't have client meetings in here. I don't know that I've ever had a customer visit my shop, period. Right. Um, so I, I always do on-site consultations and stuff, um, so it doesn't need to look perfect, but I still want to be able to enjoy myself while I'm here. So we, we did some interior stuff about seven years ago, and it hasn't been updated since, so it's probably time for a few updates but so you uh do you sit over here you have an x mark chair is that is that for real <laughs> yeah, yeah we, i just noticed that one of my employees won this on an instagram giveaway shut uh, up that's awesome and <laughs> she she usually uh sits over there but then she's like you know what I'm just actually i might have just taken it from her i'm not sure uh, she'll fact check you later yeah yeah so i do have a young lady that does uh all my uh, invoicing she has payroll for me she helps with estimating. Um, she does a lot of work from home. She just had a baby about a year ago. Okay. Her desk used to be right there, but she hardly ever comes into work anymore. Um, so she basically works from home, helps me out. I still do like 90% of all the sales. And then I do all the uh, tax filing on my quarterlies, estimates, stuff like that. But cool. she does the payroll, the payroll tax. I just kind of do the the summaries at the end of the quarter quarter for her and the, so what's the workflow do people come in here you give them the the, the workflow and the route or the what, what they're doing today and then yep. kick, kick them out and they're out on the road yeah pretty much um i we usually meet in the summertime we meet about 6 15 and okay. here in the morning so it's pretty early so i get everybody uh what their to-do list is i make sure they get loaded try to double check and make sure they have what they need um and then they all go out <clears throat> the maintenance crews like the mowing and the gardening crews they're good to go i don't need to check up on them at all they they know their routes yep. they know what the expectation is for quality but the uh the landscape construction we do do some landscape construction jobs 
those I usually stop by first thing in the morning, kind of give them what's going on, and then uh, at least one more time during the day to kind of check in on the status. So I like it, man. This yeah. is a pretty cool setup. I we like do it. have a few cabinets here, which is like little safety things. Um, I, I always supply plenty of earplugs, so these are all boxes of earplugs here. Um, we used to have a coffee machine here, but we don't anymore. But sometimes people bring in coffee cake or something, so we got plates. Plates. Um, we got we got some deodorant here in case you forgot that <laughs> uh, on your way in. And then this cabinet here, we keep gloves. We offer any employees that they need gloves or whatever, they can help themselves. And I just restock these as soon as I see we're getting low. Um, Very cool. It always seems like you could use a pair of gloves out from the work that we do. Oh yeah, never ends. Okay, so we do do some landscape jobs, uh, landscape drawings, but I do not have a computer program at this point, so it's all hand drawn. Um, so this is kind of like, my equipment for drawing up a plan for somebody i've got just some pencils and some crayons for coloring and i'll kind of show you what a finished print looks like but um it's pretty old school and it's very time consuming especially if they need to make changes um so i would be open to like finding someone to do sales and design for me at this point i haven't done that yet <laughs> but i will kind of show you like what a finished plan look like. Uh, so here's one here <clears throat> that we're going to be planning on doing here this this summer. Um, but yeah, you get the, the house layout, do the landscaping, it's all hand drawn, and if they make any changes, you sketch up a new one. So, wow, <laughs> no kid. But we do, we do charge for designs, um, something like this, it's probably going to be in the $1,500 range. Um, for a landscape around, that's probably me making site visits at least twice. Okay. Um, but all freehand. Yeah, all freehand. Probably, definitely should be charging more. Uh, <laughs> but if we get the job, that always helps too. But, um, that's awesome. That's that's how we do our landscape designs at this point. All right, man. Well, uh, we'll bind it up right here. Uh, I've been asking folks, Jeremy, what's uh, something that you like about the shop and what's one thing that if other people were going to build theirs that you would change or do differently or if yep. you were going to build your own, uh, what would you do differently? Yeah. So the big important things to me is um, good lighting, um, a clean, like, you know, a person can get, a buy, get by without lining the walls with steel. I mean, you could have the stud walls, but, but for me, it makes a huge impact just to have like that clean look yep. on the on the walls and then overhead doors um if you're going to be it'd be nice to have wide overhead doors you're always pulling equipment in and out it seems like and you can catch a weed eater really fast on the side and then there's 250 bucks worth of repairs on that weed eater when you could have just spent the extra thousand <laughs> and had wider door. doors longer term um and you know we're renting here so i'm not going to be picky because I don't own it, so I can't, but if I had heat, that would be awesome. If I had insulation, that would be awesome. But other than that, I'm pretty satisfied with how we, how we have everything. Yeah, and what was the dimensions on this guy again? Yeah, I believe it's 70 odd feet by 40, something mm -hmm. like that, 70 by 40, so. I dig it, man. Well, yeah. that was, that's awesome. Well, we thanks. did put, I mean, most guys do this, but we do have several uh, like electrical um, extension cords, basically, that you can pull down and string around, I would definitely do that. It's a very simple thing to do, buy a couple of those at Lowe's or something. Yep. Um, I think that's a 40 footer and then we got like a 25 footer over there on that wall. We use them all the time, so. All right guys, well I really appreciate Jeremy uh, giving us the lay of the land, giving us the tour. Hopefully you guys are enjoying and appreciating the shop tour series. Um, by the time the video is done, we'll have a little playlist here and a little card and you can check out the other uh, people that we've interviewed and the tour and all that fun stuff. But. Um, Dude, this was awesome. Yeah, it was great showing you guys around and uh, don't hesitate to reach out on Instagram or whatever. So. Yeah, uh, where can people find you? We are at J Jacobs Grounds on Instagram. And that's really where we spend all of our time, so. Awesome, brother. Hey, well, hey, uh, thanks for opening up uh, your shop and your uh, tour and uh, or letting us have you on the tour. This is a really good time and I uh, appreciate you, brother. Yep. Thanks, Brian. All right, guys. Well, uh, we'll see you guys here on the next uh, tour. Uh, don't forget to hit thumbs up if you guys enjoy it and uh, leave me some comments down below. What do you guys think about Jeremy's shop? Uh, anything you change or do different uh, or anything you liked here that you guys saw? And uh, we'll catch up with you guys here on the next one. 
All right, guys, hope you guys enjoyed the shop tour. I'm having a bunch of fun showing you guys these tours and just seeing the people's layouts of their shops, their build, their companies, and also the correlating podcast. In fact, we did that podcast with Jeremy Connect. I'll leave a link in the description. You can check it out at our podcast, Fullerton Unfiltered Podcast. And you know what? Jeremy is a great guy. Talked about social media, the importance of branding, and so much more. Guys, long story short, we're doing a eight-week series all about shop tours every Monday. So make sure you guys check out the channel on YouTube and also the podcast for that guest interview. Up next, we got Alex Nickens with Nickens Lawn and Landscape. It's going to be a real treat. He's got a 80 by 120, something wild like that, and uh, it's a crazy shop. So make sure you guys stay tuned next week on Monday. We'll see you guys there.